Sultan, who will be representing the tradition of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings of peace, my dear friends, my brothers and sisters in faithful harmony. It is a particular pleasure for me to be here at the invitation of Reverend Larry Greenfield. Having collaborated with Larry over the past decades, I consider him a dear friend. And in the Islamic tradition, a good friend is like a perfume seller. Either he gifts you some perfume, or you end up buying perfume from her, your friend. But at the least, you leave every encounter with a whiff of lasting fragrance. All my interactions with Larry have been fragrant indeed, Larry. <laughs> Absolute delight, and thank you for your enduring friendship. Today I was committed to a, a speaking at a business engagement, but when Larry called and he said, this is an important gathering, I told him nothing is more important. Business can always run on, on its own. So I put off that, but with your permission, I may have to leave a little early because there is something that I cannot put off, which is the Friday sermon. So there will be about 600 people or so waiting at that. Uh, I'm accountable directly to the divine, so please forgive me if I do that. Uh, for, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, again, brothers and sisters, uh, to paraphrase or literally quote what Pope Francis recently stated at this historic meeting with the Grand Mufti of al Asr, and uh, where he said, he described himself as a believer <coughs> thirsting for peace. I'd like to believe that we fall within that description ourselves. So let us congratulate ourselves for being blessed by the Lord to be considered and be considering ourselves as believers thirsting for peace. As a Muslim American, I'm especially privileged to join this important interfaith gathering because we act, as has already been indicated by these lovely ladies here, we act in furtherance of an admired leader, King Abdullah of Jordan, whose peace initiatives have been inspiring, including his Amman message, denouncing terrorism and promoting harmony within the Muslim world and the interfaith world. And then there was the Common Word Initiative launched under his patronage, which united the topmost Christian and Muslim leaders around the commandments of loving God and loving the neighbor. Today's gathering of multiple faith communities celebrates King Abdullah's drive via the United Nations for the World Interfaith Harmony Week. Your presence, our presence here together, commemorates this annual global event, and we are celebrating the understanding, the respect, and the collaboration in pursuit of international peace and justice, which has become so critical in these difficult and divisive times. Allow me to remind myself and all of us of the October 20, 2010 United Nations General Assembly Resolution establishing this week. And I quote, recognizing the imperative need for dialogue among different faiths and religions to enhance mutual understanding, harmony, and cooperation among people, recognizing that the moral imperatives of all religions, convictions, and beliefs call for faith, call for peace, tolerance, and mutual understanding, this resolution, and here are three important paragraphs, reaffirms that mutual understanding and inter-religious dialogue constitute important dimensions of a culture of peace. This resolution reaffirms and proclaims, uh, proclaims the first week of February every year as this word in a faith harmony week between all religions, faiths, and beliefs. And this resolution encourages all states to support, on a voluntary basis, the spread of the message of interfaith harmony and goodwill in the world's churches, mosques, synagogues, temples, and other places of worship during that week based on love of God and love of one's neighbor, or on love of good and love of one's neighbor, each according to their own traditions or convictions. That's what we are commemorating at this important gathering today, convened by the Parliament of the World's Religions. That we are all committed to peace and understanding, 
as a moral imperative of our faith. That we are reaffirming with total conviction the criticality of mutual dialogue among different religions in order to enhance understanding, harmony, and cooperation amongst the people of the planet. That we are recommitting ourselves to spreading the message of interfaith harmony across the world in our places of worship, of business, of education, of recreation, and of social engagement, and definitely as part of our social media engagements. And we do so, my dear friends, on the basis, again, of our shared love of God and the good, and love of fellow beings and neighbors, and respect for our world and the environment. Most importantly, perhaps, in a society which is increasingly being torn asunder by dangerously divisive forces bent upon demonizing the other, the minorities, the oppressed, the immigrants, we are reminding ourselves of the shared commitment to speak out, to act against all forms of prejudice, hatred, and discrimination we may encounter. So we are reminding ourselves of our shared com commitment as communities of faith to counter the discord and strife around us by becoming, by being forces for peace, forces for <coughs> justice, for understanding, and for reconciliation. Keeping all that in mind, let us pray, dear friends. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to you, O Lord of all the world. You have revealed your word and message as a guidance for mankind and the criterion between right and wrong. In this blessed gathering, our Lord, keep us guided on the straight path, ever discerning of and acting upon what is right, ever vigilant of and avoiding what is wrong. Dear Lord of guidance, of mercy and compassion, inspire us to be indiscriminately merciful and compassionate toward all fellow beings and creatures and the planet and the environment you have entrusted to our care. Dear Lord of guidance, of justice and of peace, in a society and world increasingly tested by prejudice, hate, bigotry and racism, shower upon us your enlightenment so we may transcend our differences of color, creed, and national origin, and overcome our baser instincts, and work together for a truthful, faithful, just, principled, peaceful, and harmonious coexistence. May you, our Lord, be extolled in your exalted majesty, glorified in your profound attributes. May your blessings be showered upon all of your messengers, upon all the blessed in this gathering, upon this city, upon this country, and upon this world that you have entrusted to our care. Amen. Amen.